Hello everyone. I am so excited to be here with you today to talk about Kubernetes and one of its best resources, the custom resource definition. Let's get started. We have 15 minutes, so we're going to run through this. And this is what we're going to talk about today. Container-based applications have become popular because they provide lightweight and portable environment for running software. However, Managing a large number of containers can be challenging. Therefore, Kubernetes is regarded as the best tool for this purpose. Kubernetes is important because it automates the key aspect of container management, such as deployment, scaling, load balancing, and networking, thus streamlining the entire process. One of the most impressive feature is this controller system with its reconciliation loop that makes sure the cluster's current state matches the desired state by continuously watching the resources for any changes. For example, if you want two bus running in your cluster, but only one is available, the controller will automatically create a new pod to make sure that the two pods are running the cluster. Kubernetes is open source and can run on various cloud platforms, making it accessible to organizations of all sizes. And with a large active community of developers and users, Kubernetes is continuously improving and evolving. How does Kubernetes work? Kubernetes uses the notion of resources such as pods, which contains one or more container, and deploying them using another resource, namely deployment. The pods are then managed across a cluster of nodes, which is another resource that provides abstraction of machines. There are lots of built-in resources in Kubernetes, and they all work together to ensure applications are running smoothly in the cluster. Essentially, a Kubernetes resource is an endpoint within the Kubernetes API that stores a collection of API objects of a specific kind. Before going to today's topic, let me tell you a story about a company and the obstacles they were facing. As they say, a picture is worth a thousand words, so I narrate the stories using lots of pictures. Consider a company that's managing a large number of IoT devices, such as sensors and cameras that generates data that needs to be processed and analyzed in real time. The company is using Kubernetes to manage its application infrastructure and has deployed several microservices to handle data ingestion, processing, and analysis. They are facing challenges in managing their IoT devices because, because each device produces different type of data that requires specific analysis. Additionally, in the event of a machine crash, certain tasks need to be completed before deploying the application. However, the built-in resources provided by Kubernetes are not ideally suited to automate this task, making it difficult to manage the system. This is where custom resource definition comes to the rescue. Custom Resource Definition, or CRD, is a way to extend Kubernetes API to allow users to define custom resources and their properties. Much like how DNA contains genetic information that shapes the way you look and how you behave, CRD contains the information that defines the properties of custom resources in Kubernetes. CRD matters because it allows users to expand the functionality of Kubernetes without having to rebuild it from scratch. And the custom resource can be managed using the same tools and workflows by building as building Kubernetes resources. Basically, you can create a resource such as Happy and Kubernetes will act as if Happy is a built-in resource. Now let's revisit our IoT example where we created two CRDs, one for the camera and another one for sensor. And doing so informs Kubernetes we have the DNAs for the camera and the sensor. And this implies we are able to instantiate a new camera object 
by a declarative manifest file like this one. We're telling Kubernetes we want the camera to have these properties. Similarly, we create an instance of the sensor resource with these properties. By creating the camera and sensor resources, we can get information about the camera, such as the status, logs, without needing to navigate through other resources in the cluster. Custom resource definition are Kubernetes objects that consist of four primary sections. Type metadata includes API group and kind. Object metadata contains labels and annotation. In the spec section, we specify properties for the custom resource. The fourth and the last section is the status, which indicates the current state for the CRD. We will look at each of these sections in the following slide. Type metadata is where we tell Kubernetes we want to use custom resource definition to define our own custom resource. In the object metadata section, we specify the name of the CRD. If we name our CRD camera.mygroup.iot.com, we can use kubectl get CRD to retrieve it. The spec section is where we can provide information for the Kubernetes API server to manage requests for the custom resource. The spec.group defines the API group and domain for the custom resource. API group is a way to group portions of the Kubernetes API. For example, we can group all of our custom resources under a single group. We name the custom resource in the spec.main field. To ensure the custom resource is accurately defined and conforms to the Kubernetes API specification, we use the Open API v3 schema. Additionally, mandatory fields, data types, and constraints for the camera resource or custom resource can be specified in this section. The status section displays the current status of the CRD, which includes details about the creation of the resource and any associated errors or warnings. This section is automatically generated by Kubernetes and cannot be altered by user. However, CRDs alone don't do much. They are just blueprints that define the structure and behavior of a custom resource. You also need a custom controller to manage and operate on these resources. A custom controller includes the business logic to manage a workload. For the IoT example, a custom controller is watching for the sensor resource, and when it finds it, the custom controller will deploy a sensor application if it doesn't already exist. It uses the same reconciliation logic as Kubernetes, which involves watching, diffing, and acting on the differences between the current and the desired state of the cluster. By combining CRD with a custom controller, we can create powerful custom resources that can automate complex operations in Kubernetes. When a custom resource definition is combined with a custom controller that includes business logic, the resulting combination is called an operator. Operators are Kubernetes native application, which provide a powerful way to automate and manage complex tasks within the Kubernetes cluster. Writing Kubernetes operators manually is hard. You have to create CRDs, custom controllers, and a bunch of configuration files, which can be time consuming and prone to errors. Additionally, it requires a deep understanding of the Kubernetes architecture and API, which can make development process even more challenging. Fortunately, developers can rely on tools such as the operator SDK it provides tools to build, test, and package operators. This toolkit includes features like scaffolding and code generation to quickly bootstrap new projects and simplify the process of creating operators. 
Here are the steps to create an operator with operator SDK. Use the operator SDK init command to initialize a new project. This command scaffolds the directories required for your project. And use the operator SDK create to create a new custom resource definition. Here we are creating a new sensor CRD. Similarly, we can create a camera CRD. The dash dash resource option generates code for the custom resource API. And the dash dash controller option generates the controller code. Operator SDK provide a make file which simplifies various tasks in the development process. For instance, the make docker build docker push command can be used to build and push an operator image to Docker Hub. Similarly, the make deploy command is used to deploy the operator as a deployment within the Kubernetes cluster. Operator SDK generate boilerplate files for an operator project. In this demo, I'm going to show you how to use the tool and deploy an operator in the cluster. First, we have to create empty directory and CD into it. The operator SDK init create boilerplate files includes a controller and a CRD. The create subcommand is used to create your custom controller definition. In this case, we're going to create one for sensor and one for camera. And if you list out dash dash resource dash dash controller, it automatically generates those boilerplate files. So there are some files that needs to be updated. For example, the camera type and also the sensor type to adding the properties that you want for your new custom resource. As you can see, the custom resource definition have been generated for you. And you're going to have to update these two files depending on the properties that you want to add for the custom resource. A controller sample is created for camera and sensor. This is where you would put all your business logic and the reconciliation loop. And the make file makes it easier for you to um, use the commands. In the I have a repository created and will be shared with you so you can download this repo. So you see that there's no camera or sensor right now because it has the CRD has not been deployed and make deploy will deploy the CRD and the controller. So now we have a controller and CRD in the Kubernetes cluster. And this is the right output. It says that, yes, I understand you have a camera custom resource definition, but there's no custom resource object in it yet. We're going to use OC logs. By the way, I use OC instead of kubectl, but you can always use kubectl or kubectl. So we're going to watch the controller's log for any changes. So you can say OC logs dash n is the namespace and that's where the controller is. And then the pods name. So 
So there's the controller's log. And this is the custom resource, the um, declarative manifest file that we are going to deploy into the cluster. So now I do OC apply to deploy the custom resource uh, manifest. Watch the log up in that window. The controller is looking for the sensor object and when you find it, it will create the pods. And I asked for two, so there's are two there and the OC describe give you any information about the um, the operator okay and that concludes the demo thank you so much for being here with me